On the agenda tonight, we're going back to the 1960s. We're going to be taking a look at Percy Sledge, and he's going to be performing When a Man Loves a Woman. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, we're going to be taking a look at Percy tonight singing this monster hit that was released in 1966. And I am going to be jumping into this. It's actually quite a long performance. So, if you want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it, of course, there's a link in the description below. As always, I'm going to allow the video to play through the pitch monitoring software will appear on screen and we'll just jump into what's going on here with Percy's voice but let's have a listen Percy Sledge when a man loves a woman So I'm going to jump in here because this is just great vocal technique because anybody attempting to sing this song, you're going to have to be prepared to be hitting notes at the top end of the male tenor range all the time. So when we take this back, we can see that we've got this A sharp four, this just going to be relentless. And when we're talking about the male tenor range, we're talking about, you know, the A4 being the top end of that. And, you know, the B4 and the C5 then getting into counter tenor range. But the impressive thing about this is the way that Percy controls his voice because the giveaway is his distance to the microphone. So when somebody hits a note that is high up there, especially if it sounds like it's in chest voice for guys, they're more often than not going to be belting this out. So what you will see is before hitting this note, and this would not work for this song, it would not be possible to do it like this. So if you're holding the microphone and you're coming in with and you're trying to get up to that A4, A sharp 4 in your chest voice, you're going to have to really push to the point where you might do that, hit a ceiling where you're going, wait a minute, and you'll get all of that strain. And because you're trying to push so, so hard to get up to that kind of pitch, it means that you have to hold the microphone further away because you're, 
you're belting, you're shouting, it turns into shouting because you can't really sing that note anymore because it's too high. So this is the thing, that when we're looking at this, have a look at Percy's mic technique. Because when I say it gives it away, his vocal control, but just how relaxed he is doing it, the softer phrases, when he goes lower in his range, he's holding the mic in the same place, which means that the volume of the high notes are the same as the low notes. So it means that when he's going, na, 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 that sound is as easy as hitting the high notes. And this is why it's just great vocal technique, because this is Percy using his mixed voice. He's not belt even though it sounds like it and this is the thing with great singers when they use their mixed voice so efficiently and so well it can sound like belting but the sound is really small so let me just play this through and you know look in the background to see where this mic is Look how close it is to his mouth. If he was really belting this out, you know, like I was demonstrating, you know, straining to get these notes, he wouldn't have the mic there. So this is how we know the sound is really small, but it sounds huge. It's great to hear singers like this or who actually have the ability to do this. And some people can just use their voice in the most efficient way and hit notes that are that sound like you know they're belting them out the top end of the male tenor range but they're not they're hitting it in a mixed voice in a really light place just getting perfect vocal cord closure and just using just enough air and not too much air so because i've learned to sing from scratch this kind of thing is so difficult to do and it's something that i would love to be able to hit notes totally you know, relaxed going up, you know, all the way up to you know, the top end of the male tenor range, but get them to sound a particular way. Such a difficult thing to do when you're trying to learn to do it. But I just get the impression from Percy's voice and from other great singers that they just do it naturally, that they can just get this configuration in their voice because they haven't really learned to sing from scratch. They've learned from being a kid. They've just done it naturally. And yeah, I, I think if you if you sing when you're a kid, and then as you grow older, you, you, you're you used to using your voice in the most efficient way possible. You haven't got into bad habits. And that's something that, yeah, I know that certainly, yeah, I, I've done when I was learning to sing. I realized that I couldn't sing. And when I then tried to sing, <laughs> I was doing it all wrong. So it just gives you such an appreciation of this kind of level of ability and, and control. He just puts in the accuracy there, but by no means are we always on lines here because great singers don't hit lines all the time. <laughs> See down here, I mean, we're between notes, uh, between notes, and then kind of sharp here, sharp, you know, almost between notes. And even with this sound, when he's lower down and, and you know, putting all this range together and getting this little tail off at the end, he's still got what sounds like a little bit of compression on on there, but it might just be his natural tone coming through. Yeah. So yeah, it's still a little bit of that can't can't keep his mind on nothing else, and that else, <laughs> you know, the little tail off, and and again, the notes don't really matter because when you listen, the fact that I can repeat this line shows that him being between notes doesn't matter. Those are the notes. But if you're looking at it, you say, well, those weren't the notes. He was halfway between the A sharp three and the B three here. So he's not actually hitting the melody that we're hearing. But and this is the great thing about great singers and the fact that we don't hear it in this kind of detail. It just sounded great. It sounded spot on. So let's just listen to the next phrase. He'll change the world. Again here, he changed the world. You know, between notes, he changed. He, he wasn't, you know, actually on the line. He, he's between lines, but it still sounds great. For a good thing you smile. If she is bad, he can see it. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so good to 
look at him performing this because maybe if you were just listening to this you might think that he had the microphone really far away and that he's belting this out so it's great to see just how relaxed he is he could do this all night and this is the point that if you if you're wanting to sing this song you have to do it like this if this isn't your natural range if you're having to get up to this kind of height the a sharp four you're gonna have to hit that pitch in a relaxed way because maybe 10 or 15 seconds into this song it's relentless you're not going to be able to you know belt it out with bad technique and if you do by some miracle manage to do it for one take of the song by the time you get into your second number of your set your voice is going to be shot you know let alone doing it night after night so yeah just massively impressive here let's listen on And it almost sounds like he gets a little bit more a little bit more kind of nasal as he goes higher but he still kind of maintains that tone to it something that i did want to mention with the horn section here but the horn section on the original release on the original record it is i believe slightly sharp it sounds slightly out and it's just the end part of the song on the original so what they did was they went away they recorded this in the studio and the version that you will know and that horn section at the end it was jerry wexler who listened to the recording and said oh no the horn section at the end that's sharp so let's re-record it but when it came to release it they got the takes mixed up so they released the originals <laughs> so the whole exercise of going through it again and now having the horn section in tune or more in tune is slightly sharp i think but it still sounds fine and even in this live performance you will hear that it's like they're slightly out and it's just a live performance so it doesn't really matter and this is another thing about having a great vocalist is that percy is going to be hitting the mean the average of what he can hear frequency wise he's going to hit the note that just fits the best with what he's listening to so yeah that original record <laughs> just ended up being the one that they recorded in, in the first place so yeah a bit of trivia for you but let's listen on Another thing that you'll notice about great singers when they're hitting high notes like this, what they're doing is holding back air, but it makes it look like they're pushing out more air. Yeah, I mean, it's just the perfect use of air, but have a look again. So it's that kind of, you know, the movement of as if he's going, na, 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 you know, as if he's kind of really going for it but you can see from the mic that it, it, he's not you know putting in loads of effort here then you get the other great singers who are hitting it when a man and allowing a little bit more i mean this is an a sharp four i don't know why i'm trying to do it but you know that it's it's less intense for them and this is something that yeah i mean i wouldn't be singing this song in the first place but you know just being able to appreciate the level that this vocal is at is something to look out for when you are watching singers there might be notes that 
a singer hits where they do go, go further away because they are belting. That's just how they hit those notes. But it's the kind of thing that, yeah, if, if you're not doing that with good technique and also resting your voice and making sure that you're not straining and you're not doing it night after night after night, even great singers like Adele has had problems in the past from hitting notes like that, from belting and being in demand, you're required by the record label to do gig after gig after gig, night after night after night, and there might be a particular song where you don't hand it off to head voice and you hit that in chest voice and it might be right at the top of your range and you know night after night after night if you're belting that out that's where you can do damage to your vocal cords and you know get you know nodules and all that kind of stuff and some people i think even adele maybe might have had surgery on her vocal cords in order to try and solve that issue so yeah it's just being prepared and knowing that the the high note in this song you know the a sharp four is relentless and when i say the high note it's not like you're leading up to it for the end chorus and that's the crescendo it's just relentless throughout so yeah you got to have the range to do it and even the runs when you're going na 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 you know coming all the way down to the g sharp three that line is just part of the song as well. So you've, you've got to, you know, take that into consideration that you're going to have to go an octave below and then go all the way back to the A sharp four again. But let's just listen on. When I make love a woman, I know exactly how to be baby, 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 come on. And there we have it. And because this is a TV performance, it means that we then get the overdubbed applause to just see it out. And then it kind of fades out. But yeah, just a um, hugely impressive performance here because of the notes being hit, but not just that, because of the way the notes are being hit. That's what's really impressive because to see somebody sing like this and keep that microphone in the same place all the time shows how balanced his his voice is and how he's just hitting these notes with minimum strain perfect airflow but anyway thank you guys for requesting this particular video for me to take a look at keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below let me know what you guys think and if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll catch you guys at the next one rock